Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back for another Fake Grand Order video, and I'm continuing on what I was doing last time, which is talking about the units that are in the 7th Anniversary Commemorative Limited Servant Daily Pickup Summons. Oh yeah, and uh, unfortunately I missed today, so <laughs> I'm also going to be covering uh, Mysterious Heroin X, and then the other two units that are going to be coming up, the one that's going to be for today, when you see this video, and the other one is gonna be for later, which is gonna be uh, Musashi over here. So let's get into it. If you don't know, this is the campaign that's gonna be going. It's gonna be going all the way to the most recent summer event. Um, should you be summoning on this? No, I don't think so for the most part, unless you've already planned ahead. But if you're curious about these units, then I will gladly talk about them because I like talking about units in general. <laughs> so let's go. Uh, like I said, we're gonna start with Mysterious Heroine X, and I'm gonna make this one extremely brief, extremely brief, because she's already out in the game in terms of a summon, and the people who already went for her already went for her. So here's here's the thing you need to know. Mysterious Heroine X, when she first launched, was very bad, but they buffed her a whole bunch of different times to make her a little bit of a better unit. And she has her specific niche, which is uh, against specifically <clears throat> anyone that's an Artoria face. Meaning anyone who is considered an Artoria face in the game, she'll deal a bonus amount of damage. So that's really what she's here for. Um, and that's the, the very vague basic. She's like a quick, she looks super cool, and that's about all I can really say about her. How is she actually? I think she ends up being one of those units who is like solid to use. Meaning that you're not suffering if you're using them. If you're specifically going against who they are meant to beat, which is Artoria faces, they end up being very good. The problem usually ends up being that if you just want a generic single target quick AoE unit, that uh, single target AoE unit, that would be insane. A single target assassin, typically it's Kama. And then if you're going outside of quick, then you're going to get maybe King Asan. And if you're going to get some of the other ones, there's some people who are like, I don't even need a single target assassin for that matter. And then there's also, in terms of not, for, it's not a free to play unit, but it is a five star that is always in the game. Jack is also a very solid unit and Jack does bonus damage against women. And a lot of the Artoria faces are also women. So you can see where the point is, is like when you pick specifically the Mysteri Mysterious Heroin X, you're picking them going, I really like them and they're going to be good for this. And I think that's an understandable thing of, I don't know, and it's specific, it's very tough for me to talk about this unit because I don't have them. But as far as I'm aware of, I haven't heard too much coming from other people, but if you're going to tell me that a unit that has been buffed, one, two, three, four... Their entire kit has been buffed, including their Noble Phantasm needs another buff. Then I don't. I would really like to know what buff you would like to give them. What are they missing that they? I think the one thing that they don't have is the ability to get MP up, and that's about it. But at the same time, it, they they seem so pigeonholed to specifically fight one type of person. That <laughs> if you make them too good, then there's really literally no other reason to use any other unit but to go for them. But I don't know. I think she's a cool unit. I've always liked her. I've always wished to have her, and I don't have her at the moment. I did have her on an old account on JP, and I also have Mysterious Heroin XX, so it ends up being, um, it ends up killing the urge of wanting the summon for her, so that helps for sure. But, yeah, that's Mysterious Heroin X. For the most part, most people shouldn't really be summoning for it, but for the people who really like her design, and specifically, um... Her design they'll at least get a unit that they know can fight other artorias and that actually kind of fits with a lot of the lore that they built up where she is supposed to be like the ultimate saber killer and stuff like that so that's mysterious heroine x wish you the best of luck if you end up some if you went summoning for her or if you still plan to at some point next this is the unit that's actually going to be out here for today it's voyager and this is voyager um he is a foreigner he has two quick cards two arts cards one buster Three hits on quick, three hits on arts, three hits on buster, then five hits on extra. First skill is Voyager of the Stars A. Charges on MP gauge, grants self debuff immunity for three turns, gain 10 crit stars, a 50% um, MP charger on a cooldown of six. His uh, sixth skill, his sixth skill, his second skill is Swing By A. Grants self evasion for one turn, increase on quick performance for three turns, reduces one enemy's quick resistance for three turns. 
And the quick up at level 10 is 20%, the quick resistance down is 20%, and the cooldown is 6. His third skill after the strengthening, which he got most recently, is Protection of the World and Cosmos B+, increases one ally's critical star absorption for one turn, increases their party's quick performance for three turns, increases party's crit damage for three turns, and then increases party's critical attack chance resistance for three turns. The absorption is 600%, the quick damage up is 30%, the crit damage up is 30%, and the crit chance resistance is 20%, and that is also on a cooldown of 6. If you want to see what was specifically buff, I believe all they added was the ability to get some quick, and that's it. His passive skills are Existence Outside of the Domain C, Independent Navigation A, and Contact with Civilization D. His third append skill is an Anti-Lancer Attack Damage Aptitude, and his Noble Phantasm, which he gets after a Strengthening, which I think should be... Yeah, when, when Australia Girl comes into the game. Um... Pale blue dot, O oh, distant blue star. Um, hits five times, it's quick, it deals damage to all enemies, deals 150% extra damage to enemies with the sky attribute. Charges Parity's MP gauge by 20% and charges the MP gauge of living humans allies by 20%. At MP level 1, it's 800% damage, and then at level 5, it's 1200, and then he increases his own MP damage for a single turn. 20% to charge level 1, and if you get him to the final charge level, it is 40%. But the version that we will have on NA for the foreseeable future is this, where he deals less damage um, overall, and the charge to MP gauge is lowered by 10%. And because this the damage is now 600% to level 1, and at level 5 it's 1000, the MP damage increase is the same though. And that is Voyager. Um, I really like Voyager. I like using him. I think the some big issues with him. Um, for the most part is that he actually can have a little bit of problem when it comes to damage because as you can see here the buff is the only real um, Before the buff he only really had a way to give himself like 20% more quick and then lower the resistance But even then that's for a single group of enemies um, So that would typically mean that would be on the first group of enemy and then this would disappear uh, This will make it so at least he's getting 50% to himself and that can help a little bit more now, but that is still kind of a kind of a liability. He sometimes will not do enough damage, especially if you're not fighting someone with the sky attribute. It does help a whole lot if he's fighting people with the sky attribute, but if he's not, you're going to be doing a, a little less on in terms of damage. Uh, the thing that is nice about him is that eventually this does get buffed to maybe he'll to let him do a little bit more damage. Um, the charge to living humans is really nice. He's actually a pretty decent support for those kind of dudes because a lot of his um this skill in particular increases the party stuff so that's very nice um you're able to uh, the charge to party is good it's 20 percent, and then there are a living human that is 40 percent. so he's giving that to anyone who's a living human that's also something that's very nice it's kind of like it's some nice support on a unit but at the same time he is a um Usually I've used him over the time as a farmer. I don't think I've ever tried to use him in a challenge quest type scenario And if I have he typically is not able to do enough just because the damage is usually not enough Which is a shame, but again, I really do like Voyager I don't know if any of the things I mentioned change a little bit when the new Scotty comes out But I am interested to use that new Scotty uh, With him to see if the damage up will do any Will help a little bit because obviously I'll be able to run him with three Scotties, assuming I get Ruler Scotty, a friend Scotty, and then my own Scotty, and that will be a 50 increase in terms of 75%, uh, I forgot, because Ruler Scotty actually gives 75%. 50% uh, from her first skill, and then 15% from the second, if I remember right. But yeah, Voyager, I think he's a very good boy. The, the, the downsides of him are unfortunate, especially when it comes to stuff like his skills and the stuff like his damage. But I think there's ways to probably work around that if you care enough about him. Ways to pump up the damage, but it is something to kind of look to keep in mind when you're going for him. Um, would MP2 be a little bit of help? Mm, especially now, he is doing 20. He is doing 200% more damage, and then when you get him eventually to this rank, you'll be doing uh, again 1,000 instead of 800%. So mm, good help, but don't know enough. At MP1 though. I've been able to use him, it's just that sometimes he won't do enough damage and that can really hurt when it comes to specifically quick units. 
But anyway, that's Voyager. Best of luck if you go for him. And then finally, the last unit to talk about for today is Musashi, who isn't showing up with Zufu. Uh, uh, here it is, Musashi. This is Musashi. She is a, a summer delight for sure. It is. She is a berserker. One quick, two arts, two buster. Three, four hits on quick, three hits on arts, four hits on buster, and five hits on extra. First skill is the Excel Turn B, Grand Self Evasion for one attack, increase zone crit damage for one turn, 50% to crit damage and kills cooldown of four. Second skill, uh, fifth serving B, Grand Self a double the number of hits when normal attacking with arts cards for one turn, increases zone damage against when normal attacking with arts cards for one turn, and then increase own MP generation rate for three turns, 30% more damage and 50% to NP rate. Um. And then skill 3 is the Tenma Gogan EX. Ignores invincibility for 3 turns, increases on attack for 3 turns, grants self O gut status for 1 time 3 turns, revives with 1 HP. 500% chance to deal 5000 damage to self without killing. Reduce all enemies defense for 3 turns, and that's 30% attack, 30% defense lowered in the cooldown of 6. Her passive skills are Madness Enhancement EX, Magic Resistance C, Writing D, Divinity D. And her third of pen skills an anti lancer, critical attack chance resistance, and her noble phantasm, which this is the version that we're gonna have on NA for a while, so I'm gonna read that one first. I should have done that with Voyager, but I forgot. Uh, is the Gun uh, Jima? I was told there would be magic sword busting. Rank EX, it is arts, hits four times, deals damage to all enemies, reduced her critical attack chance by 30% for three turns. The damage is 450% at level 1, and if you get her to level 5, it's 750%. And then her overcharge effect is a chance to seal all Saber enemies MP for one turn. It's 100% at level 1, and if you get it all the way to the final charge level, it's 200%. And then, of course, she has the Musashi-chan uh, summer mode, which is her in the tan skin, which is all very good. Um, so, Musashi on NA, and this is going to be true for a while... It suffers from the fact that um, when she released, a lot of her kit was built around the fact that she's going to be doing a lot of damage in arts. And obviously, a lot of people were caught unaware because they released her and then they were like, well, there's not a good art support because we were in a Scotty meta and I believe um, Tombow was really the only one. And then Tombow doesn't really have a way to increase NP, so she doesn't have a way to increase her NP. So it seemed like... Well, if you can get her up and running, she's really good, but it doesn't work out. But then Castoria came out, and she quickly became one of the best arts units to use because she was arts and a berserker, so she always dealt type effective damage. And a lot of the some of the weirdness in her in her kit that you could excuse because um, okay, she's going to be doing really good Buster, uh, not Buster, really good berserker damage, and we need that for an arts unit. And then I want to say was that summer or next summer they released, um, but yeah, but when originally it was her and then the, you could say, oh, well, if I need someone with a 50% charge, then that space is charred. I'll go that way. And then the next thing they released was a summer unit and it was summer Kiara and summer Kiara had the, was also a summer unit that dealt AOE arts damage and she was really fucking good at it. And it came in another chance of like, well, um, well, Summer Musashi at least deals type effective damage. And then the next year after that, they released Summer Kama, who is as good as Space Ishtar and in some cases can be better. And it was another case of, wow, well, um, at least she's a berserker. And then finally they put the nail in the coffin and they released Summer Abuki. And Summer Abuki, which we are getting this year, effectively kills Summer Musashi as we use her now because Summer Abuki not only has a 50% um starting np gauge she has a lot of different skills <laughs> on her hand that make her much better than musashi um in the current state of na so huge problem basically they accidentally rendered a summer unit basically inert because if you want to use a berserker arts unit you use Summer um, Ibuki. If you don't want to use a specifically a Berserker, there were so many options, it became very hard. And all these units that I mentioned all have a 50% starting MP gauge as well. <laughs> they all have that skill, something that Musashi did not have. 
Um, and that was all the man, what a big bummer. And then out comes the Fate Samurai, Samurai event, and then they gave her a buff. And this is the buff that they gave her. She deals now, and her NP deals more damage, going from 400, 450% at level 1 to 600%, and then doing the basic good there. And then she got an overcharge effect that said specifically deal extra damage to Saber class servant enemies, and it's 200%. That is an insane amount of damage to give to a unit. <laughs> this makes it so that she actually now does have a, a point now. She's really, really fucking good at killing Saber class servants. I think I've seen some people who use JP saying, what even is the point of running an archer when she does just as much damage when she's fighting the servants? And that makes her... That makes... A lot of sense now it makes a lot of her kit make a little bit more sense now i will say some of her skills i still think could probably use just a little bit more fine tuning because <laughs> one turn of 50 percent crit damage and one evasion if, well, evasion for like a single attack is not the greatest this this skill is fine i think you probably don't want to mess with it without fear of just like ruining everything uh, so we can keep that the way it is. But then this third skill, this demerit, is really, really heavy. And now that you're going to be using her to fight a little bit more um, Saber Class Servants, you could probably change that around a little bit. But I also recognize that this is still a very good skill. So it's going to take a while for that um, strengthening to come in. Like I said, it does not come up until Samurai Remnant. And that's going to take a while to get here. Um, at least a year and a half from now. It's a long wait, and there will be a banner with her around that time. So the only real reason that you want to pick up Musashi is that you want to use her because it's Musashi, and I think that's perfectly fine, and there's a valid reason. That's why I have her. I still use her even though I have all those options. All those options that I list listed off, Space Ishtar, um, Summer Kiara, Summer Kama... Musashi still ends up being my second most used out of them because I love her the most. Uh, I love her a whole lot. Uh, and I love using her and sometimes I just want to berserker destroy them all and not worry about it. Summer Kama ends up being number one and then it is Space Ishtar at third and then fourth is Kiara in terms of use, in terms of pure use. But to be fair, it's because Space Ishtar was I think around seven when I got to like Bond 7 I said I can spread this out a little bit more and give it to some of the other units. But either way... I digress. Musashi, she gets a really, really nice buff, but it's probably smarter to wait. Um, but man, this is a really good outfit. I wouldn't mind having more Musashi. And then there's also the chance that a lot of people went to go do Berserker, looking to get or Morgan and Archie Alter, and they got Musashi instead. So I don't know how many people would actually summon for it now. <laughs> I did see a lot of people be very sad that they got <laughs> Summer Musashi instead of Arjun Alter or Morgan. But I say, hey man, don't worry about it. Very soon she's going to be killing the shit out of, say, of uh, Archer's for, uh, Sabres for you. Um, I really hope I've been saying Sabres this entire time and not Archer's. That would be really weird. But anyway, that's it for the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be making one final one to talk about these last two, which should be relatively pretty soon, and then we'll start gearing up towards summer, which, again, should be on the 17th. Thank you very much for watching. Oh, man, I am tired as hell. Uh, I, but I can't wait to keep doing stuff. <laughs> I got a lot. I had a lot of stuff planned, but then I had to kind of focus on some other things and get ready to get stuff ready for other things which is as it goes sometime but anyway that's the end of the video everyone thank you very much for watching i'll see you guys next time peace out